uh, welcome everybody uh, to uh, the uh, webinar on uh, navigating uh, technology uh, for 21st century learners. Um, so uh, my name is Kevin McDermott. I'll introduce myself at the minute, but uh, uh, we're here courtesy of Alpha Publishing. Uh, so with, we've got a lot to get through, so I'm, I'm going to crack on. Uh, Okay, so just quickly about me. My name's Kevin McDermott. Uh, uh, I'm head of ELT with Alpha Publishing. Uh, I've been in publishing a long time. I taught uh, TEFL uh, previously. Uh, and with Alpha specifically, I've been working with Alpha for six years, uh, uh, specializing in uh, uh, designing and creating ELT programs, both for the private sector uh, and for national national curriculums, uh, and also uh, I have a particular uh, set of experiences in uh, dealing with ELT for uh, specific markets, uh, and that has been in the uh, MENA region uh, in Saudi, uh, and also in Latin America and the uh, and the Asian countries as well. Uh, and the reason that we've all come here today uh, is because we are uh, talking about uh, we're talking about the idea of living with technology as part of a bigger concept the bigger concept is learning social emotional skills uh, um, but it's all contained within uh, a new program that we've created uh, which is called English vision it's an ELT program uh, and I'm the editorial director of that so that's that's pretty much the reason why uh, you're all having to uh, suffer through this uh, with me today. <laughs> so, okay. So in terms of uh, what the uh, course itself is about, okay. English vision, and I'll, I'll take you through the components a little in a, in a, a few seconds. Uh, and we're not going to spend much time in this, but I, can, I just really want to give you guys the context uh, of, of what we're uh, talking about here today and, and why it's come around. So English Vision is our new six level course. Uh, it's based on the uh, CEFR standards. That's the common European framework of reference for language standards. Uh, and also on the Cambridge YLE to preliminary, preliminary standards. Okay, based around the skills of reading, writing, speaking and listening. Uh, we've got songs, sound, spelling, Obviously, 21st century skills, uh, critical thinking. We've got CLIL, uh, uh, and we've got cross-curricular -cur features in the course, differentiated learning, and then finally, what's bringing us all today, all here today, uh, is the uh, concept of social-emotional learning skills. So, in terms of the course itself, uh, here are the uh, the six covers of the student books. Uh, you can see they're they're pretty colourful, very impactful. The idea with the course is that it's fun. There's a sense of, sense of adventure about it uh, that'll draw the students in. Uh, so, within the course itself, six levels obviously, but the components are: if you if you look here, you've got the student book level one. Uh, there's a cover there for workbook level two. Uh, the teaching guide for level three, then we've got an assessment book for level four, flashcards level five, and posters in level six. So those are the six components of the six level course. And obviously there's a, a, a digital component to that as well with our own uh, LMS platform. Okay, so, so the reason that we're here then uh, is because of uh, technology. Uh, and how that fits into the concept uh, in English vision of social emotional learning. Uh, the idea uh, when we were creating the series uh, is that uh, there are a lot of challenges facing students today. Uh, what are they trying to uh, learn? What are, the, what are we trying to help them take away from the classroom? Uh, the challenges today are uh, so much more difficult. There's so many more challenges than there were even uh, 10 years ago, okay? The challenges are no longer just in the realm of academia. 
uh, you're talking about uh, English language learning and in fairness, learning in general uh, isn't, is no longer just about what goes on in the classroom. English language is no longer just about what goes on in an office. Okay? English language students today will encounter the language within the classroom and without the, cla without the classroom. And by that, I mean they'll encounter it in the playground at home. Uh, but most complex of all, uh, they'll encounter it online. So that'll either be on their computers, their laptops, uh, on games consoles. Uh, it'll be on iPads or on their phones. And this throws up an entirely new set of challenges uh, for young learners. Uh, how are they going to handle these challenges? It's no longer just about uh, uh, the correct grammar. It's no longer about uh, the correct spelling. It's no longer about uh, the correct language function. Uh, it's about how they are being expected at a very early age to engage uh, with the English language uh, in a social uh, setting. And that has today much more impact uh, on them as students and as young people than it ever had before. Uh, so how do they handle these challenges? With English vision, uh, while we, of course, we're looking at things like 21st century skills, communication, collaboration, where we're looking at uh, uh, CLIL content, we were looking at the language being used in uh, real life uh, context. Um, but that didn't seem, when we were looking at ELT programs uh, and teaching in general, it didn't seem that that was enough to prepare our students for, uh, for what's going on in the world today. Uh, so uh, we wanted to combine uh, uh, SEL social emotional learning skills uh, with the course okay brings us to the sel slide okay now i don't propose to read out everything in the slides but uh, it's worth saying here that uh, for those of you who don't know uh, social emotional learning skills uh, are all about helping uh, young learners young people to understand and manage emotion emotions set positive goals uh, be able to ask for help when they need it uh, and also make positive uh, decisions. Uh, you're talking about being able to build good relations, uh, good relationships uh, with uh, both their classmates uh, and with uh, uh, other people around them, whether that be family or whether it be uh, with uh, teachers. Uh, and the way that we've built uh, the SEL skills in English vision is uh, on a We've split the six levels into three different categories. Uh, so we've got uh, in levels one and two, and I'll, I'll take you through this a little bit later on, but just to, just to, to mention it right now, uh, levels one and two, we deal with uh, living values, uh, and that's very simple concepts. You know, things like cleanliness, sharing. Uh, then uh, it becomes a little bit more uh, uh, advanced in levels three and four as you're teaching them about things like responsibility uh, and finally that progresses having introduced the concepts having introduced the concepts of uh, social emotional learning skills uh, and having uh, helped the students understand that concept as it evolves uh, through the various levels we finally arrive uh, at the living with technology section and living with technology, uh, uh, living with technology, as you'll see when we're going through these, throws up those very difficult challenges. So, uh, what that means then is, so if the rules of the games have changed for students, uh, and let's be honest, they have changed. They have changed. They face the English language uh, uh, in many different um, new environments. Uh, what does that mean for teachers? Uh, and the vast majority of people at the web webinar today are teachers. Um, uh, it means that as the world shrinks, uh, the classroom walls expand. Now, we've, we've talked about in, in education, we've talked about that concept before. Uh, uh, but what does it actually mean for teachers? Uh, well, it means that 
we're asking teachers at this stage. Okay, we're asking teachers at this stage to take on a variety, a, a multiplicity of roles. Okay, as a teacher, as a mentor, as a coach, as a curator, and as an inspirational guide. Uh, because what you're doing now uh, is not just uh, being asked to uh, teach children about what's right and wrong uh, within the confines uh, of a book. Uh, you're also being asked to help them make sense of where they're encountering the language outside. Uh, so that it's, it's an entirely new set of rules, not just for the student, but for the teacher. Uh, and for a lot of teachers, uh, it, it's, it's a very difficult concept to come to terms with. There are teachers out there, absolutely, uh, who have dealt with this before, may have encountered it in other spheres. But in terms of what we've been creating for ELT, it's something that uh, teachers have spoken to us about. Uh, it's something that they haven't seen much of out there. So what we wanted to do with English Vision was to try to give teachers an environment, <clears throat> excuse me, an environment in which they can not only bring up these important issues uh, or start a conversation around these topics, uh, but they can also, with English Vision, uh, we're trying to give teachers the tools uh, with which they can uh, give their students the answers to these same questions. So, so I mentioned before that uh, the Sorry. Okay. So I mentioned before uh, that uh, the course has been split up uh, in terms of the social emotional uh, learning skills uh, between levels one and two for living values, uh, uh, levels three and four for developing life skills, uh, and levels five and six for li living with technology. Overall, <clears throat> the SEL skills that we have, the values that we teach, run through the entire course. And as there are 15 units per level, that means uh, there are 15 SEL exercises and messages and values per level uh, of the book. Uh, and what I've done is I've pulled out a couple of examples uh, from levels one and two and a couple of examples from three and four, but they don't deal with technology as such. So I, I, I'm not planning on uh, uh, saying too much about them. I just want to show you the con concept and how it progresses, the idea of SEL progresses through the course. So from level one here uh, on the left, which is very simple values such as saying sorry, uh, to uh, on the right, uh, taking care of the earth. Then we move on to levels three and four, developing life skills. Uh, on the left, dealing with stress. Uh, again, it's uh, there's a small uh, breakdown uh, posing the question of uh, what is stress, the explanation, and there are exercises culminating uh, in a uh, uh, collaboration exercise to deal with that. Uh, similarly with setting good goals. Okay, now you'll see how these work uh, a little bit better when we get into the uh, levels uh, five and six, because uh, you'll see the teacher's guides there at that stage. Uh, but before we get there, so, and just to make sure, I know everybody's been settling in, uh, but just to make sure uh, that everybody uh, is, uh, focused and engaged uh, with what we're doing. I have a little uh, just quiz, simple quiz, to that'll maybe give you an explanation of why exactly we're here today. Okay, you know we're talking about uh, discussing living with technology and the impact it has on our students uh, and on our children. You know, is that is it a real impact? Are we overreacting? Are we making a mountain of, out of a molehill? Well. This quiz is intended to uh, uh, maybe shed a bit of light in that. So, if everybody can uh, 
maybe enter, if you use the, uh, the chat button or the comment section, uh, you can enter your, your answers on it. Uh, but I'm going to put up a little simple question now. Okay, so how long do you think the average 8 to 12-year-old spends on screen media each day? A, up to an hour. B, one to three hours. C, three to six hours. Or D, six to nine hours. So, all right. Because I'm screen sharing, let me just, I'm going gonna, gonna to pop out here and see if I can see some of the comments coming in. Okay. Well, it's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting uh, watching the comments coming in. Uh, uh, by the way, just now that I'm stopped screen sharing, I'm gonna let you guys. So just a quick wave to everybody to say hi. Uh, so you know it's a real person here and not a, an automated uh, 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 robot <laughs> or recording. So I can see everybody's answers coming in. Okay, wow, that's great guys. Okay. So I'm going to open, I'm going to share screen again. Uh, and the answer, according to this particular study, is just under five hours. Now that comes from, uh, uh, that's a US study, okay? Uh, the interesting thing about that is, and, and we'll see it in a minute, uh, because we'll do the same with the teenage one. Uh, is that I think the vast majority of answers were either C or D. Um, uh, this was done in 2020, uh, and certainly from uh, the studies that I see coming in, the conversations that, that I'm hearing, uh, it, it's, it's, it's probably uh, a D now. The actual answer for this is C, but it's probably a D now. And if we do the same with the next question, okay, how long do you think the average te teen spends on screen media each day? Same range of answers. So if I can ask everybody again to... Okay. Hope I'm not jumping across anyone, but I'm just about to put the answer up on screen for you. Uh, it's D, so seven hours, 22 minutes. Now, I'm not sure how many uh, parents uh, we have online today, uh, but I've got three teenagers. Uh, and uh, to be very honest with you, uh, if I thought that they were limited to seven hours and 22 minutes a day, I'd be delighted. Uh, the uh, uh, I suspect most people are the same. The amount of screen time uh, that kids uh, are, are online today and adults as well uh, is, uh, is phenomenal. So that throws up a whole series of new challenges uh, for them. So. So as we do uh, the calculations for these, uh, one of, it, it's a nice segue into one of the uh, sections, one of the sections on living with technology, one of the, the SEL, social emotional learning skill sections that we have in level five. Uh, and having used uh, that little pop quiz, um, uh, it's uh, always, a good thing, I think, to try to teach your, your children uh, and your students to know when to unplug. Okay, so within the book, this is the, the student page uh, that you're looking at. Uh, uh, so living with technology, knowing when to, un when to unplug. Uh, the idea here is to uh, start 
be able to start the conversation in the classroom with the students. So you're introducing fairly basic top, top, uh, topics of uh, uh, people being plugged in, uh, but then trying to introduce the idea of it's, uh, it's responsible to know when to unplug. So the, t the teaching guide then has uh, more of input for the teacher so the teacher can frame this conversation. Okay, uh, so with the teaching guide section, uh, we've got basic instructions uh, for the teachers, write on plug offline, check messages on board, ask students uh, to uh, talk about it, uh, try to elicit the information. So, uh, so with uh, knowing when to unplug, the SEL skill here uh, is about responsible decision, decision making, okay? And you're trying to remind the learners that moderating time spent online is part of that decision making process and being able to self manage. OK, uh, so you can see then with the uh, exercise itself, uh, it's fairly straightforward. I look at the pictures in which situations do you think uh, the people uh, uh, have unplugged? OK, uh, why do you think so? So uh, Within this exercise, uh, the TG's thing answers will vary, all right? They should unplug because they're not having any family time together. Uh, he should unplug uh, because he's not getting enough sleep. The idea with uh, the idea here is that uh, you're getting the students to think critically about this. Uh, you're getting the students to talk to each other and begin to actually consider what they're doing rather than what the majority of uh, uh, people do on the phone on their phones today, which is uh, almost access everything unconsciously. Uh, so there are, in terms of uh, other ways to uh, entice out the conversation, and I'll give you a few examples or a few ideas uh, that you can maybe do with your students uh, within that. Just obviously teachers within the classroom are going to have their own ideas uh, on how they want to do things. So with this one, uh, I mean, you could set challenges, for example, uh, just if you want to challenge your students to do something else uh, offline to, to unplug, uh, you know, you could set challenges such as uh, uh, sharing pictures or videos of doing offline activities, uh, drawing, painting pictures of the view outside, helping around the house, uh, challenging your students to complete those uh, activities and then to come into the classroom the next day and discuss them. It could even be something as simple as, as, as reading uh, a book or reading uh, a chapter in a book and coming in to discuss uh, that the next day. But the key to this is uh, trying to teach them uh, that it's uh, uh, there are other positive ways to spend your time rather than just to simply remain plugged in and entertained only on your phone. Okay, so moving on from knowing when to unplug, we come to a topic that I think, I'm not sure there are uh, any teachers, uh, parents or uh, children in the world that, ha that haven't been uh, touched by cyberbullying. And if they, if they haven't, that's a fantastic thing. But this is, uh, this is uh, something that is uh, rampant throughout the world and online. So what we're trying to do here is make children aware uh, both of what cyberbullying is, uh, not to do it, and also uh, if they are uh, affected by it, what to do. So this is the student uh, book uh, exercises. Uh, there's the definition there. Uh, context of what cyberbullying is, uh, and then we come to the TG. Okay, so you can see that's pretty uh, comprehensive. We've got uh, what to do if you encounter cyberbullying. Uh, this is helping the teacher to introduce the topic. Uh, then down under uh, social emotional learning, uh, self management. So. One in three teenagers, and I, I, I'm going to go through this in detail because this, I think, is, is one that's worth uh, dwelling on. One in three te teenagers experience cyberbullying. Uh, uh, so we've 
we're talking here about uh, a process uh, called Think uh, that they can use to help them recognize responsible social media use, okay, uh, before they themselves post anything online, okay, just because, as it says, just because they're upset at someone, okay. So the recommendation is uh, to use the following questions uh, uh, along the lines of the word think. So T is for true, is it true? H is for helpful, is it helpful? I is for inspiring, is it inspiring? N, necessary, is it necessary? Uh, K, is it kind? Um, okay, and then once you've gone through the think process with students, uh, try to introduce uh, them to, uh, this is, I suppose this is a little personal toolkit as we call it, uh, or a set of uh, uh, exercises just to help them uh, cope with uh, something upsetting that they may have encountered online. So step one, breathe, okay? Don't react in instantly. Uh, think about it. Uh, think about what you're going to do next. Step two, uh, use the think process. Uh, true, helpful, inspiring, necessary, kind. Uh, three, uh, report it. Uh, don't be afraid to report it. Uh, to the actual uh, social media channel. channel. Uh, step four, take a break. Again, uh, connected to uh, step one, which is breathe. Just step away from this. Uh, don't react immediately. Step five is taking care of yourself, uh, dealing with uh, the stress of this sort of behavior. Uh, step six, uh, and this is an important one because everyone, every student that's caught up online uh, they could be doing it uh, in the midst of a classroom. Uh, they could be doing it in the midst of a busy uh, supermarket. They could be doing it in their own room. Uh, but once they are on that phone or once they are online with that laptop, uh, they feel uh, like they're in their own little world. Even if they are, even if it's the case uh, that they are uh, talking to friends uh, and they feel that they're part of something, uh, once they encounter negative uh, behavior online once they are the subject of uh, cyberbullying uh, they uh, retreat very much into their own world uh, and it's important to be able to get that message across to them that they're not alone uh, that they can talk to someone whether that be friends family teachers whatever but it's important to encourage them to do that okay so that's how we work through on cyberbullying. Now, I'm just going to make a note of our time as we're going here, folks. Uh, okay. Tied into cyberbullying uh, is the idea of conveying the right tone online. So uh, it's very difficult. Um, uh, it's very difficult. Sorry, I'm just laughing because somebody has a, a it's nicely timed, by the way, whoever has the filter up of uh, <laughs> online, I'm not sure who it is. Uh, but that ties in very nicely with what we're talking about today, which is conveying the right tone or mood, uh, uh, identity online. So in terms of conveying the right tone or mood, uh, there's a lot that can be... Uh, conveyed, uh, there's a lot that can be conveyed in terms of a message, in terms of an actual, uh, in terms of actual words. Uh, or is there? Uh, because quite often, uh, not only are, do you struggle to interpret what somebody says in an email, uh, uh, but also you quite often mistake the uh, intention uh, behind the email, or you, you mistake, you, you misunderstand uh, what was the the tone of the conversation the person is trying to have with you. So that becomes even more complicated uh, online on mobile phones. Okay? And it's a challenge uh, and it's a challenge for, for the English language. Um, so as an example, I just thought I'd run through on this and see how many people uh, see how many people uh, understand the uh, language uh, of mobile texting that most young people are using today. And quite a few adults as well, but certainly with the young people. So conversation I had uh, with my 16 year old son last night, he's back in Ireland. I'm here. So uh, 
so we communicate quite often by text. So if I can ask everybody, uh, as I put these up, see if you can follow the conversation. Okay, so again in the comments, uh, see if you can deci decipher that and type out what that is. What do you think that stands for? And this is the easy one, by the way. It gets considerably harder than this as we go, or at least it did for me. And does anybody, by the way, you're typing it up, but if anybody, uh, if anybody wants to call it out to me, that would be great as well because uh, I'm kind of limited as to what I can and can't see here because I'm screen sharing. So does anybody want to call that one out for me? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, very good. Okay, so that's the easy one, okay? That's good or that's great? Absolutely, okay. Next one. Okay, anybody wants to Type Answer. It up or call it out. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm Selwa. Um, no, it's nothing I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I don't know what's DW. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Don't don't worry. worry. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. So it's only taken uh, uh, about 80 of us to figure that one out. Okay, but yeah, you're quite right. No, I don't know, to be honest, but don't worry. Okay. Next one. Uh, this should be straightforward for anybody. Okay, okay. got to go. Got to Talk go. to you Talk later. To you later. Excellent. Okay, got to go. Talk to you later. Okay, try this one. Everybody uses this. I use this all the time. I've sent and received this I thousands of uh, times. I think it's okay, right? Mm, but yeah, it, it probably does. But does anybody, I'm using this one for a specific reason. Does anybody actually know what KK means? Well, I really don't know, but I usually receive it from my friends when they want to say that they're okay with something and there is a double K, but I don't know for what reason, really. I, I, I agree with you. You're absolutely right. But what's interesting about this is that you have literally millions of, if not billions of people around the world sending each other KK. And, you know, does anybody actually know what it means? I think it's I, keep knowing. It's what? Keep knowing. I don't, it could be. Uh, the nicest one, uh, we were having a, a discussion earlier today, and the nicest one that uh, uh, one member of staff here came up with was kiss, kiss. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, I, so the point here, the, the, the reason I'm making, uh, I'm bringing this one up specifically, is that uh, the English language uh, is a constantly evolving language. But in the past, uh, it, it evolved quite slowly. So a new word was, at, was added to the language, was added to the, the, the diction, dictionaries, uh, but it was only after uh, a fairly slow considered process. And that was fine for us, uh, you know, certainly when I was growing up, when I was learning uh, languages, uh, which is quite a while ago now, but I had the benefit of, uh, of that slow, uh, slower process. Right now, what we're asking our, our own uh, students, uh, some of them, I mean, I, I started the earlier pop quiz, I think it was at starting at age eight, but I mean, let's be honest, uh, there, are, there are little kids uh, you know, of five or six wandering around with mobile phones right now. Uh, so we're asking very young children uh, to uh, engage in, in language and in social, social settings that we never had to face before. So that's why this issue of uh, social emotional learning skills is so important. Uh, it can't just be the case uh, that we do what we've always done before, which is, from a publisher's point of view, produce a set of books that are technically, grammatically, uh, linguistically accurate and correct. Uh, and, you know, we give them to the teachers, we give them to the schools, we hand off, and our role is finished. And similarly with the teachers, it, it's no longer the case. 
the teachers only teach within the four walls of that classroom. Uh, uh, it has to be, all of us have to be about more than that. So, okay, so that brings us on to uh, the actual, uh, the actual uh, level that deals with living with technology, conveying the right mood, the right tone of the right mood, okay? So you can see, it's, it's what I was talking about before here, uh, and it's not just talking about those abbreviations, it's talking about other things, subtleties, subtleties such as the capital letters you see here in, in, in the first of these uh, texts, uh, which, which is in caps. Now, most of us know now uh, that if you send a text in cap capital letters, uh, you're either angry or you're shouting, okay? Uh, so we kind of know that, but there are other uh, complications as technology evolves at such a rapid rate. So in number two, uh, we're dealing with emojis. Uh, and number three, we're back to things like uh, later, L8R later, okay? With the TG here, uh, the way that TG teaches this is, again, uh, it's encouraging, uh, first of all, the teacher to introduce the topics, to introduce conveying tone and mood, uh, but then to ask uh, what the mood is. Uh, is it happy or grumpy? Uh, and the tone, is it lighthearted? Is it aggressive or is it uh, shouty? Um, the social emotional uh, skill here is social awareness, okay? And you're trying to teach, or this section is trying to teach learners to interpret uh, the, the situation cues, the, the language cues uh, that they're being given uh, in order to either uh, reply or to, to interpret a situation so they send the correct message in the first place, okay? Uh, Again, it comes back to trying to get them to think about uh, what they're doing with English, uh, with their English online. There's one final one. This is the one where, uh, as a dad of a teenager, 16 year old, you always like to see this one. Uh, you Thank rarely you, get Dad. It. Love you too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, okay, I can't say I got that too often. Now, uh, the other, uh, the, I think I pulled around maybe uh, eight or so of these uh, for us to go through, just to give you guys a spread uh, of what we're of what we're doing within the course. Uh, so we have a little bit of time left, so I'll, I'll try and go through these quickly, but I don't want to skip over them too much because I want you to get a good idea of what we're doing here, uh, which is pretty unique. So this is tying the the entire concept together in terms of being a good digital citizen, okay? So there's an explanation here uh, of uh, what a good digital citizen does, uses technology in a, in a positive way, okay? You've got to treat the people you're communicating with kindly, don't bully or cause fights, uh, keep your information private, uh, don't give away personal details to either sites or online users, uh, and remember, and this is, this is something, again, that I've, uh, uh, been teaching my own children, which is that once it's out there online, it's there forever. You can't go back and delete it. Once you've written it, once you've posted it, it's out there. Uh, so what you're trying to teach them is to be aware not only of the effect that some of this online content can have on them, but what their actions, uh, what impact their actions can have on others. Um, and I suppose the takeaway message from all of that is remember to be yourself, okay? Don't try to behave differently online. One thing that I always taught my own kids is that, you know, if you want to say something online, think about whether you would go out into the middle of the street of the town or city or village that you live in, and would you say it in front of everybody there? If you wouldn't, then you shouldn't be posting it online. But the idea uh, that we're trying to part, impart here uh, of being a good digital citizen is to uh, be kind, be safe, and be yourself, okay? So we've got some examples down below. Uh, okay, what do you think examples of being a good digital citizen are? We've got uh, uh, Minji, we've got Omar, we've got Tom, we've got Sue. But the answer here, 
we don't have time to go through them all, unfortunately. Uh, but the answer here, as you can see in the TG, uh, is uh, one and three. Uh, Minji uh, has a social media account. Uh, she keeps her page private and only shares photos that her mum approves of. And Tom likes to play video games online. He's on a site his parents approve of. He doesn't give away his personal information. And he also always treats other users with respect. So again, if you look at the scenarios we're talking about here, so uh, we've got uh, social media accounts, uh, we've got following a football team, uh, we've got video games, uh, and we've got uh, uh, sharing uh, pictures. So all of the examples that we're using here are all contexts, are all environments that the students themselves uh, would be familiar with. Okay, so these are not alien concepts that we're talking about. Talking about. Okay, this is an important one. Uh, we live in an era of, uh, uh, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later on, but we, we live in an era of everybody's talking about fake news. Uh, and it's very difficult, even for adults, it's very difficult uh, for uh, people to be able to sort out uh, what's fact uh, from opinion uh, and also what's fact from uh, fake online. But in this section here, we deal with the distinguishing fact from opinion, okay? And you're trying to, because children are going to be online, they could be online uh, alone, uh, either browsing, they could be on there accessing it to do their homework. How are they going to know uh, what's fact, what's opinion, okay? So uh, we've got the exercise down below that talks about this. Uh, uh, and I should have mentioned, actually, just looking at the particular exercise, I should have mentioned as well uh, that a big part of this particular exercise is advertising uh, and trying to teach children uh, what the difference between a fact is uh, uh, and what advertising is. So definition is very simple. Uh, fact is a true statement that can be proven. An opinion is someone's belief about something that cannot be proven. Uh, and if you look at the TG guide on this, of course, it has the steps for the teacher to go through. Of course, it has the answers. Uh, and it's also then got uh, the uh, social emotional learning skill uh, for the teacher to understand it. I suppose a big part of what we wanted to do with the SEL section in the book is for the first time to put down on paper or on screen uh, what these are. A lot of these are values that, that we all grew up with. Some of them are new, some of them are peculiarly uh, to do with online life. Uh, they've arisen because of the internet. But a lot of this is, uh, is also about values that we all grew up with. We may not have put a, a label on it. Uh, so what we wanted to do was to put a bit of a roadmap there for, uh, uh, for teachers um, to be able to uh, I suppose, impart the value, but also uh, impart it in such a way that it made sense in terms of online life. So with this one, responsible decision-making, uh, it's learning how to evaluate information, uh, decide whether it's accurate, whether it's been verified, and whether it comes from a reputable source. So obviously the language here is, is, is teacher's language. This will be up to the teacher to break this down and help the, the students uh, to understand what the uh, uh, what they're being taught and it should help to make them uh, well more effective when it comes to online researching and this then leads into uh, well, actually I could have led into something let me just go through yeah uh, I'm going to jump over that last one and come back to it that actually the section on uh, the distinguishing fact from uh, opinion leads nicely into something uh, on piracy, okay? No, we, we, we thought long and hard before including piracy in the uh, course. Uh, and because, uh, that because it's a course aimed at, uh, at, at the level it's aimed at, we, we wondered whether this was relevant. Having talked to uh, uh, a lot of teachers, having done a lot of market research on it, uh, this actually came up 
pretty amazingly uh, as, as something that people wanted to include and wanted addressed. And it's the issue of piracy. Uh, and as much as we don't like to uh, think about it in terms of our children, there's a huge amount of this going on. A lot of it's going on uh, because children aren't aware of it. They're, it's not that they're actually committing a crime deliberately, it's that they're just simply not aware of it. So file swapping, file sharing, uh, they're not aware of what they're doing. So we're trying to break this down in simple terms. So within the TG, Living With Technology, it starts off with draw a pirate on the board, ask the students uh, what the, who the person is, what he does, uh, and then you, you move on from there. Okay, so what you're trying to do here not only is uh, is deal with piracy, but you're also uh, uh, teaching them about right and wrong online. It's coming back to that general concept as well to be aware. Okay, now, just going back to this one. Uh, being popular online isn't always a good thing. Connected into cyberbullying uh, in many ways, uh, because what happens with a lot of students is uh, they are uh, trying to be someone else when they're online. Um, so that can come out in different ways. Cyberbullying uh, can be one uh, outlet for that, but also uh, trying to be popular uh, is, uh, is another popular way for that to come out. So what we're trying to, the value here that we're trying to impart to the kids uh, is that, uh, of course, you should try and uh, make friends online, use it in a positive way. Uh, but it shouldn't be everything that you do online. It shouldn't be uh, how many likes you get uh, uh, or how many positive comments you get. Uh, shouldn't be what uh, drives your online interaction, okay? Because ultimately, uh, it will uh, lead in many cases to uh, children uh, becoming anxious about why they're not popular, how can they be more popular. So within the TG, I think we went on too far to uh, So within the TG, uh, we try and uh, tease out the conversation. There are the three uh, examples uh, of uh, why being popular online isn't always a good thing. Uh, uh, and it explains out in this occasion, we're talk uh, there's a section, there's a pull out box on critical thinking. Uh, so uh, in pairs of the learners discuss the evidence for their answers uh, in, a, in exercise A. Uh, so, there's an element of critical thinking on all of these. There's an element because we're trying all the, all the time to bring this back to the 21st century skills and critical thinking. So have the students communicate and collaborate with each other, uh, but also then as well, be able to think for themselves. And that's, the, that's one of the key points in all of this uh, is that what you're doing, uh, it's not that the SEL section of English Vision or in any other book uh, will solve the problem. Uh, but what it is doing is it's uh, starting the conversation and it's enabling the teacher. It's giving the teacher the tools to start the conversation in the classroom. Uh, so it's not a lecture. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not talking to children top down. Uh, it's about trying to engage the children to get them to think about the world around them. Um, covered piracy. Uh, and this brings us to the last of these, uh, which is online and offline identity. Uh, uh, obviously connected into uh, things like uh, distinguishing fact from opinion, uh, fact from uh, advertising uh, versus real news, uh, online and offline identity. So this is about internet safety as much as anything else. Uh, who you're talking to, uh, what information you're giving them. Um, so your real world friends, 
the friends you have offline have real identities. You know their names, their characters, their behavior. However, you can't be sure about the identity of the people that you meet online. Uh, their personal information may be fake. Okay. And when we get to the TG, uh, uh, teacher prompts the discussion about identity uh, and the social emotional learning skill here uh, is pretty complex. Pretty complex. It's about regulating emotions, uh, cognitions, and behavior. Okay, uh, uh, and it, actually, it, it is worth saying that a lot of the subject matter here that we're dealing with today uh, can maybe seem a little bit scary. So, you don't want to scare the children. You were, that's not the goal here. The students. What you're trying to do is you're trying to uh, teach them about the environment uh, without actually scaring them. So, all of the conversations that the teachers should have in this should be age appropriate, obviously. Um, but within this one, uh, what we're trying to do here is have the students consider uh, the age of the person they're talking to, uh, how can they, if they don't believe it, or if they're not sure about the person's age, how can they check this? How can they infer this? So what you're trying to do is get the children to work in groups uh, to come up with uh, ways that they might be able to uh, uh, solve some of the, the on, online problems they will face in terms of who they're talking to. So in exercise A, we're looking at fake personal information. Exercise, uh, and two, it's fake appearance. Uh, three, uh, uh, rude behavior. And the reason that's included is because that's how sometimes uh, people will talk to each other uh, if they think they're anonymous. Okay. But thanks again, Kevin, and to everybody. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks, folks, and lovely to meet you all.